What's going on, everyone? So, according to Joe Cowley of the Chicago Suns Times, we have an update on Zach Levine and Nikola Vucevic. So, according to Joe Cowley of the Chicago Suns Times, the Chicago Bulls are still actively pursuing trades of Zach Levine and Nikola Vucevic. Uh, here is the exact excerpt from Cowley's article. So, of course, all of this can change if Karnas, uh, Karnasovic, or however you say his name, uh, can move Levine or center Nikola Vucevic. Uh, two moves he continues to actively pursuing, uh, but with very few landing spots left, Carnavalis uh, is running out of time. Cali said, It's important to note that while the Bulls are still actively looking for Zach Levine trades, uh, they're also working out plans to keep him on the roster as well. If Levine does remain on the Bulls, the organization will look to rebuild his value so that they can inevitably just trade him later. Uh, also, because so much with Levine has been botched over the years, the Bulls must do everything they can to change the narrative around the two-time All-Star and rebuild his value in the eyes of the market. So... Basically, Chicago's still desperately trying to move off of Zach Levine and both Nikola Vucevic. So far, there hasn't been any takers, which, I mean, I get it, right? You, particularly with Vu, talk about a guy that is not looked very good at all, um, particularly with the uh, overseas playing with uh, the Olympic team. And he just... You look at his age, right, 33 years old. You look at what looks to be decline. Is it or is it just, you know, it's just tough or it's just different, um, you know, for the the Olympic team he's playing on. But you also look at the contract. And you're talking about a guy that's making $20 million this year and then $21 million next year. Now, I do think next year Chicago might actually have a real shot at trading him because, again, he'd be a $21 million expiring. But what team wants to be on the hook for $41 million for a center that, you know, he's not really a great defensive guy. I know he's had, like, a good defensive rating and whatnot, but he is not known and looked at as this defensive stopper. And then on top of that, it's like his he's just, he's looking like a guy that is really kind of slipping as far as the game goes. Now, offensively, he is a very versatile center in that regard. He's a guy that you can dump the ball down to. He can go to work around the post. He's a guy that you can give the ball out, pick pops, can stretch the floor. You know, this guy's a double-double guy. Get you, you know, 18 to 20 points, 10, 11 rebounds, right? Like, he is versatile. But particularly with a team like the Lakers, right? This is the Laker channel after all. Um, I personally want the Lakers to stay away. Now, like, the only, like, in a perfect world, we get uh, Wendell Carter Jr. or, you know, Walker Kessler or something like that. But I've talked about this before, is that the problem is we don't know if any of those guys are really available, right? Teams listening, right? Other teams making an offer doesn't necessarily mean that the team wants to trade them, right? The only centers we know that are actually on the market and are being shopped is Nikola Vucevic and then... Uh, Clint Capella. The only two centers that are really available. And, you know, personally, I'd rather the Lakers just stay away. I, I don't, I, I don't like the idea of Vu, personally. I know some people do. Um, but I just, I just don't think he's, one, is he really going to come off the bench? Two, I, again, if he really is starting to decline, that contract's going to get worse and worse. Where, if you're going to go and trade for a $20 million center, I'd rather get Clint Capella because at least you know what you're getting with it. You're getting the rebounding. You're getting, you know, a little shot block. He's not really what he used to be, but you know, you get you get a good rebounder. He's still one of the best offensive rebounders in the league, but he's more inclined to come off the bench. And more than anything, he's 20 million expiring. Right? If Vu was on that 21 million expiring, I'd be a little more open to trying to work out a deal to go get him because it's like, if it doesn't work out and he does slip, well, then you can always just let him walk. And now you just freed 21 million, right? You got 21 million off the books. LeBron can kind of do some, you know, finagling next season to kind of work out new contract, maybe get a piece or two. 
right? If it does work out, maybe you're re-signing him cheaper. Maybe you're re-signing him for like $10 million or something. So I don't, like, but if you're going to do something like that, I'd rather you just go get Clint Capella, okay? Because $20 million expiring, everything that I just mentioned, you can actually do with him. So personally, I would stay away from Vu. But getting on the Zach Levine part, look, I'm still Team Levine. I am. I, I really do think that the Lakers should make the move for Zach Levine. He's still, until March, on the right side of 30. Um, this is a guy, one of the best catch-and-shoot three-point shooters in the league. He provides the athleticism the Lakers are looking for out on the perimeter, gives you that consistent go-to scorer, guy that can just do a little bit of everything, right? I mean, this is a guy that dropped a 50-piece, and he only played 25 games last year, right? Like, and you probably, I I know Chicago doesn't really want to to attach assets to unload Zach Levine, but you probably could. Now, would you be able to get a first? That I don't know, but I'm pretty confident that the Lakers could probably get at least a couple seconds, which just gets you more assets to go make another move. But even beyond Zach Levine's fit, right, because the fit would just be seamless in my opinion, beyond that, it solves a lot of what the Lakers want to do, right? You, you get that third guy, you still keep all of your, even if you can't get, let's say you don't get anything for Zach Levine, right? Say you just swap salaries for Zach Levine. Okay, well, you clear roster spots, you get that bona fide clear third guy, and you still have all of your assets that you can now use to go do something else, right? Like you can go get a Window Carter Jr., you can go get a Walker Kessler. You can go get whatever you want. And because you'd still have all of your tradable assets, right? Like, so to me, if you can turn, you know, D'Lo, Rui, and Gabe Vincent into Zach Levine, can you open up some Ross spots so you can go, you know, sign you know, a guy or two? But even then, like, you can still go and and look to make a move in order to land, like I said, a, a, a Window Carter Jr. or a, you know, you can go and land a, um, you know, a Walker Kessler. Or maybe you're you're getting a Nick Richards or something like that, right? Like it just it gives you the flexibility that you wouldn't get otherwise. Get a legit, you know, twenty plus a game scorer. I mean the the attention that Zach Levine would draw, and. I know people look and go, oh, yeah, but he's just so injury prone. He's just so, you know, this, that, and the other. And, but like those same people want, like, a Lori Markinen, for example. Right? Lori Markinen, the most games he's ever played in his career is 68 games. Like, and he's about to make 40 plus million, and it's going to be with the new TV deal, right? At least Zach Levine, he's basically locked in, and you know what he's at. Right, and you're talking about a guy that you know. Yes, last year I understand he only played 25 games, and people kind of hold on to that. But he was also supposed to finish the season. No one knew he had to get surgery until the Detroit Pistons rumors came to light. And then as soon as the Detroit Pistons rumors came to light, all of a sudden everyone was like, "He's like, ah, I'm not going to Detroit," and decided to, you know, take the season off. But you look at the previous years; he played 77 games. Right in 2022, 2023. And then he played 67 games the year before that. And then you had 58, 60, 63. Right. So again, if he as long as he's playing around 60 to 65 games a season, you're good. And then healthy come playoffs. But this would give the Lakers a legit third option that on any night could just be your one option and just go off and go give you but again, he played 25 games and still gave you a 50 piece. It's a guy that can just go get buckets. One of the best catch and shoot shooters in the league. One of the best. He's excellent off ball. He can make plays. He can he can do everything. And defensively, he's not as bad as people make him out to be, right? Like when he, especially when he's locked in and engaged, which he wouldn't have as much of a burden offensively. That you know maybe he could buy in a little more defensively. And this is a guy. I mean, even even for his career, his career percentage uh, for defensive rating is a 114, which is better than league average. Last year, it was a 117.8, which was better than all of our guards. And then you look at, like, the previous years. Zach Levine in, in 2022, 2023 
was a 114.7 just a year ago, right? Like literally just a year ago was a 114.7. So again, if you can get me that level of defense, right? Uh, you know, a 114, 115. And then on top of that, give me the, the type of offense that he can provide, particularly alongside LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And then you think of how how good of a quality of just looks and attempts that he would get. I mean, this I just think this guy would be absolute A1. Seriously. I mean, this guy would get wide open looks. And when he's cooking, good luck. I mean, seriously, like, how do you defend? Because you can't trap him. You can't double him. You got LeBron James and Anthony Davis. I, I just, I think he'd be a seamless fit on top of being a seamless fit. I think you just, you have that consistent score that can hit shots down the stretch, give you some athleticism, give you some rim pressure, shoot three ball. I, look, I have been on the Zach Levine train for a while now. I still think it's the best move on the market. I think you clear your roster spots. I think you get him and you don't have to give up any assets, and then you can be patient and try to find you know, a move or two down the road, or immediately if you want to, you could still go make some other moves. You go get a Dorian Finney-Smith. You go get... I mean, you'd still have options there. You'd still be able to go trade guys. Right? Like, I just... I think that if you can pull it off, I think you do it. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you think like, yeah, like go get Zach Levine, go get Zach. Uh, do you think, no, stay away from Zach. What about Vu? Do you like the idea of getting Vu or do you think, no, same thing, stay away from him. Not worth it. Don't do it. Um, but how do you feel? Whatever your thoughts are, love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.